Welcome to Impact the World, the show for and about creatives, change makers, and entrepreneurs. This is a conversation episode where a special guest shares with me what they are creating and the behind the scenes journey of their experience. Hi, welcome to Impact the World, and my guests today are returning guests. It is Jeff Stegman and Clayton Stegman, who are the creators and the founders of Focus Life Force Energy, FLFE, uh, as it's known to most of us who subscribe to the service. And the service is really a remote energy healing field that can be directed at your home, towards your office, towards your phone, or to a device. It's a fascinating technology, and when I first met the guys a little over three years ago now, I immediately felt a kinship with them. And the FLFE service was something I tried out very quickly, but one of the things that I've really enjoyed about getting to know both of them a little more is not only is their technology a really fantastic way to support consciousness, they themselves are fascinated by the energy of consciousness, the measurements of consciousness, and the scientific studies and data that they are now doing on not only their own work, but consciousness at large. So given we've been through quite a strange year or so, I asked them to expand a little bit on what has the consciousness of the world been doing over this last 12 to 18 months, and also invited them to share a little more about their FLFE service which they offer everyone a free trial to. So if it's something you're curious about and you want to try it for yourself, follow the links in the show notes to experience your own free trial with no obligation. And for now, enjoy the show with Clayton and Jeffrey. And if you in general are a fan of the show and you want to support us, you can do so by subscribing and leaving a rating or a review over at Apple Podcasts. Enjoy today's episode. Clayton and Jeff, thank you for not just being back on the show, uh, for your second show here on Impact the World, but for the work that you're doing um, for many different reasons. Not only do I personally and Stephen love and use the FLFE technology, and we have done for a few years now, But I also shared with you just before we started, even the fact that you're out there doing something like this with the intent to do something like this has has a really important effect on consciousness, on the planet and on us as humans. So I know how, how dedicated you have to be to kind of do work like this. And I know you have a wonderful team with you who work to support you and support your your customers, um, and that they all work hard too. But I just want to say thank you for doing what you're doing. And I'm glad we get to take a bit more of a dive into it today. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yeah. Great to be here. Okay. Yeah, good to see you again, Lee. Yeah. So for anyone who has watched many of the episodes of Impact the World, you may remember that Jeff and Clayton were among my earliest guests. And in fact, the show, I believe, came out in May of 2020, but we had actually taped the show almost a year earlier. So I was glad to get you guys back on the show now because I know that not only has what you're doing with FLFE changed, but boy, oh boy, so has the world and the consciousness of the world in that time. Before we dive in a little bit. I had gone to members of my portal community and told them that I was having you guys back on the show and said, have you got any questions? And so I I took a few questions from the ones that were submitted. And I thought that I would like to start with one of the portal community's questions. And it comes from Connie, who's been with us for quite some time. And she asks, I have been using the service for some time now with excellent results. What I would like to know how does this technology work? I am not able to explain it to somebody. Can you help, please? And the reason I think this is a great start is, you know, the, what you have created is a remote energy healing field for your house, your office, your phone. Um, but I think when I've explained it to other people, that's often the part that people 
want to grasp what is it, how does it work? So perhaps if you could start by explaining that, that would be a wonderful place to start. Sure, I could start and then hand it over to Clayton. So FLFE is a physical system of interconnected devices. So it is, it is a physical um, device that we originally, when we found the inventor, it was um, a series, a stack of plates and coils that had uh, high-speed alternating current running through them. And it's moved into a simpler form now without the, uh, without the, uh, the alternating current. But it is, these devices um, focus energy, just as the name, focus life force energy. We're focusing what's known as prana or chi, life force energy into a very highly energetic field that's part of this, this device. And into that device goes um, instructions that tie it into a database so that people can come on the free trial and, and come on and off the system and turn it on and off as we'll explain later um, through the database and that's how it's connected directly to the machine itself. And it's much like human consciousness. So I'll pass it to you, Clayton. Yes, the, um, there is a, there's a couple of what we call input stacks where the energy comes in through the technology and then it goes to a single output stack if you want to visualize it. And in the bottom of the output stack is a, a highly energized, uh, field of consciousness. And that's, as Jeff said, is connected. We found a way to connect that to a dat database so you can go online and you can put your address in and the, the, that high consciousness quantum field is associated with your address. And in addition, we're able to make requests to divinity to add different qualities to the environment such as increased communication, perhaps better sleep. Um, we have a program we might talk about later called Energize Nutrients. Now it's a new, so it's a request to divinity to energize the food as it comes into your body and then energize each nutrient in that food. And it's much like a human consciousness in that when we think of somebody and they call us a minute later, that's quantum association it's easy to forget how amazing humans are. I mean, really we're extraordinary creatures and the, the thought that we hold in our mind or that prayer of goodwill for people that sends out a focused life force energy vibration of love. And so I think your description Lee is very uh, appropriate. It's a, it's a distant healing field technology and for me, I have to remind myself that technology is also a part of divinity. Mm. It's not just people think of machines as separate. And of course they are. And if they're used properly, they're, they're a part of God too. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. well, we're using machines right now to yeah. connect, yeah. to have a conversation and then for that conversation to ripple out. And so, yeah. You know, it's interesting that the the when we first started using it a few years ago, the friends in my life that I would explain it to who were familiar with Reiki or were familiar with any kind of energy healing, they got it immediately. Um, and then, of course, the free trial was what they would try out to see whether or not it worked for them because you let people have a 15-day window. And as you've said, it's not just that that energy field is being directed to your home or your phone or your office. You also have a system where you yourself can control the dial of different levels of energy. And uh, that, that, that was the piece for me that was fascinating. And it wasn't something I discovered until we'd been with you for many, many months. Um, but the, there were some who, un, you know, understandably are a little more skeptical because they haven't yet had the experience and so I would always say, well, just try it and see if you notice a difference. And um, I know that you have actually performed quite a few scientific experiments, uh, especially since we last recorded that, that last show. And I've just been curious to see 
because it's a very personal experience and I, I hear firsthand from the other people I know who use it, what it's doing for them. I'm curious what the science and the, the data has been showing or revealing to you. Well, I could start and pass it, pass it to you, Clayton. Um, and what's really funly is that we're, we're moving into a whole new level of research. What we currently have on the site in the evidence page is uh, a GDV camera study so gas discharge visualization cameras can, can sense subtle energies. And so they can see a higher energetic environment. And they, it also can see the chaotic energy around EMFs in an environment. And that with our EMF mitigation, which is part, part of the system, a much smoother, uh, less chaotic, more coherent energy in the space. So that was one study. Um, we worked with IONS, the Institute of Noetic Sciences in Petaluma, California. We activated an FLFE field in their um, Faraday cage room, which is a totally grounded Faraday cage room. Um, and that experiment was with random number generators. And they saw an effect of the FLFE field and where the random number generators became less random. Mm. You know, as, as, as higher consciousness can do. And we've had plant experiments with about 29% increase in, in plant growth. And we're about to do a farm experiment this summer with a 10,000 acre farm. And that should be very interesting. Um, I think I'm forgetting there, Clayton. Well, with ions, there was an improvement in executive function of the brain. So they put uh, these you know, sensors on people's home, uh, heads and they uh, tested their ability to focus on certain cognitive functions. So that's, um, that was another study that uh, was really quite interesting. And uh, most of us have heard of Dr. Emoto and the pictures of water. So we uh, finally got some results back from Dr. Emoto's lab. We've been trying to work with them for years. And so we'll have some images that we'll post when we get all that sort of written up, but the the standard Emoto images that he has on his, uh, well, they were on his website at one point. So he has truth, hope, love, you know, blessings, thank you. And he has all these standard images and the FLIV image is very close to truth and love. So there's, uh, it's very interesting, the crystal shape. Um, so when we get those, uh, when we get, we have to write it up and, and post it, but um, I thought that was really interesting that it was really close to, tr to truth and love. So I'm not too surprised because, you know, in, in knowing you for mm -hmm. the last few years and the conversations that we've had over the years, you know, I, you two are very much uh, walking your talk and, mm -hmm. and actively and within your organization and with your team applying everything that you're, um, that you're sending out into the world, very actively learning. So that, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and nor does it just the experience of it, uh, having it on our home and here in our office. And I just, thankfully, we've just moved office and house. So I updated the addresses with you guys so that you know, we, uh, we aren't blasting the people who live in the old house or um, <laughs> the old office. But um, you know, one of the things that, that comes to me here we're talking about consciousness and obviously we've just come through this year like no other 2020 and we're still in um you know much of the change in our world that that we're seeing and that we're in right now and not too long after the first lockdown which took place in america it started around mid march i remember feeling very compelled to do a mid month energy update because I, I didn't know what was to come, but I could feel, I could feel this uh, anxiety in the air and this, and this kind of oncoming storm of fear. And I didn't fully understand what it was, but I knew I had to do another monthly energy update that, that month. So I did. And then I spoke to you two. I think it was a month after that. It was sometime in April or May. And you told me that the level of consciousness had dropped so low in the world in, in a way that you'd never seen over that time period. And the level of fear that was dominant was absolutely fascinating to me. And I know that you measure consciousness 
the the Hawkins scale of consciousness is part of your toolbox, um, Clayton. And so I'm curious to talk a little bit about that because I know that you've really been tracking the measurements of the the consciousness level of the world over this last 18 months or so. Because we're recording this end of March, we'll release it probably in April. Yeah, so we do have a slide that we'll put up at some point in this conversation so people can have a visual reference. And it shows the level of consciousness in the fall of 2019. And um, the world at that time was right around uh, 242, 240, sometimes it would go a little bit higher. And the United States was in the you know, low, mid 400s. So if we look at October, you know, November, December. Could we just get a sense of, so what does it, for someone who doesn't know the Hawkins scale, what's a 240 and what's a 400? What does that (laughs) uh, calibrate to? (laughs) Paradigm blindness. We talk about it all the time. (laughs) No, I get it. (laughs) Oh God. So on the Hawkins, yes, on the Hawkins map of consciousness, it is a map, it is a logarithmic scale. So one point uh, up is 10 times higher than the point before. It goes from a one to infinity. In the human realm, it is one to a thousand. And each level of consciousness has a certain number of microwatts of electricity associated with it. So that is part of what we experience when we're in a high state. We have more energy running through us or if we're in the presence of a person with a high vibration. So if you hang out with people who are really healthy, you're probably gonna get healthier. If you hang out with people who are, uh, you know, financially free, then you're probably going to become more financially free because that type of energy relates to our energy, right? You know, where auras intermix. And and so 200 on the Hawkins map is integrity below that. So that's where the positive emotions are going uh, upward from 200. The negative emotions are lower. So if we start at the bottom, 20 is shame, 50 is desire, 100 is fear, 150 is anger, 200 is courage, and then 500 is love, 600 is peace, 700 is a a beginning of enlightenment. So 250 is neutral, 300, sorry, 250 is neutral, yes, 300 is willingness, 400 is reason. So when you find countries in the 400s, they're governed by the rule of law. Hmm. Now, it may not look like that all the time, (laughs) but there's an overall theme of being governed by reason. And so you have a judicial system and a, a governance system that recognizes the rule of law. And so uh, typically, you know, United States, Canada, just because that's where we are, um, you know, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Australia, England, the countries that are known as having a relatively sophisticated judicial system and, uh, you know, longstanding uh, implementation of the common law and different types of law would be in the 400s where if you have a company that or a country that's being governed by tribal feudalism, right? They might be down. Some countries have gotten as low as 50, right? Mm. Like when there was, when the genocide was happening in Rwanda, it was even lower than that. You know, Mm. it's just, so yeah, thank you for asking me that Lee, because I I just forget sometimes because we talk about it all the time. Of course. And so the world um, it was in the highest place in the history of the planet as a, as a, as a planet overall. Um, up to 1986, it had been below 200. Mm. For Even though there are some places that were above 200, like we talk about or we hear about Atlantis and uh, Lemuria, there were certain cultures and certain places on the planet where there was a high consciousness civilization, but overall the planet was below 200. We went over 200 in 1986, and we've been slowly kind of, you know, going up and down. It's like an ocean, the waves of consciousness, they change with events. And uh, so last fall, we were, the world was, you know, 240-ish, 242. United States was 420-ish. And then, uh, as you said in March, Lee, you called it exactly, uh, there was a start to be a drop. And in March, the, uh, the world went down to literally like in the low 200s. Mm-hmm. And uh, sorry, the world dropped below 200. The United States laid, stayed slightly above 200. So the world went down to, you know, 190-ish. 
And then in April, the world went to the lowest place that we've been, certainly in, in our lifetimes overall, it went to 100. And the United States went to 100, and that's fear. Mm. And then if you look at the graph here, you'll see it start to slowly come up to 150, which is about, ang well, starts to go up to 125 in, um, in May, and then 150-ish in April, and it stayed there. Uh, sorry, not in June, it was... 150, July 150. It's pretty self-evident on the graph. Uh, and you can see in January the 6th, 7th and 8th, the United States dropped down uh, to anger uh, from being over 200 again in December. So we did those three days just to give you an example of what the event at Capitol Hill could do mm -hmm. to a country. Yeah. So if we went back to 9-11, we'd see a, a similar thing. Right. Now, it didn't affect the world as much, even though the United States has a lot of media influence, but it definitely affected the United States. Mm -hmm. So that just gives you a relationship between the map of consciousness, uh, the, the country, the United States, because that's where you, you are, mm -hmm. the world, and our own relationship with the scale of consciousness. When I was on a worldwide meditation in April, the person was suggesting that we focus on killing the corona coronavirus oh wow that was like all around the world and so what i noticed is that the whole energy of that call dropped yeah and there was millions and millions of people and the planet actually dropped for a little while and then when that person got their focus off of killing it changed now i've heard other people talk about welcoming the lesson that it has to teach us and exploring what we need to learn as a society and how we manage our health. And that's a very different uh, attitudinal position and very different level of consciousness approach to what, what's been happening. And it's interesting hearing that about the fear because it was so evident, it was so in the air. And um, I'm curious, you know, when we as a society drop down to that level, what are some of the risks or, you know, the, the dangers in terms of the consciousness not rising again? Is it, is it, is it from your perspective that we will act out in ways that will continue to maintain that vibration because of the low level at which we're acting? I mean, that, that's what I would assume. Do you want to, uh, have a try at well, that, Jeff? Yeah, it's certainly an energy field that's there that interacts with our, our energy field. And um, so it's it's easy to engage with it and, you know, synchronize with it. And so that seems to be the, I don't know if it's danger or the challenge, is, you know, many people are living their lives in a very loving way and at mm -hmm. least at the level of reason. Um so, you know, engaging in that fear, um, you know, is, is not only pers you know, personally difficult for our health and well-being and relationships and everything else, but um, the more of us that engage with it, you know, the longer it stays around. It's part of self, you know, perpetuating uh, energy field. So the more strength we give it, the stronger it stays. Um, does that answer your question, Lee? It does. And, it, you know, it kind of takes me back to that period of time where I knew so many people who were doing everything they could to just kind of, you know, uh, bring something else, bring an alternative to the fear or the contraction, just to kind of uh, as, as best they could to balance their home life, their, their workplace, their work in the world, whatever it was. I mean, that, that was very widespread. Um, yeah. And we, you know, as our subscribers and, you know, us in the FLV environment, it was quite a contrast because we were still at the 540 to 560, 560 level of field. So it made it easier to, to sync with that unconditional love hmm. vibration. Um, but boy, when you turn on the news or, you know, you go, you go out of the house and you talk to somebody who's in the fear, it's, it, it was, it, it, that, that pull was there, especially if you're tired or, yeah. um, you know, 
at your at your limits. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious. So you know, m the measurement of consciousness has has been something that you both have been very involved in. Um, I know on our first show we talked a little bit about how you conceived of FLFE, but just for anyone who didn't see that show and is is curious, what was the spark for both of you that made you think, okay, we're going to create this device that's going to help raise consciousness, raise frequency? What was the what was the spark moment that that led to all of this for you guys? Mm -hmm. Well, it might be a different spark, same fire. So I'll share my spark, see if it lines up with yours, <laughs> Jeff. I'm sure we've been asked this lots, but uh, it was uh, going up to 2012, Lee, and there was uh, a lot of, um, let's say premonitions, but there was uh, certainly a, a big story in society about what would happen when the Mayan calendar reached that place. And interestingly enough, NASA published a, um, an article several years later that there was three major solar flares that passed between the earth and the moon. And in the realm of space, that's not a lot of, that's not a lot of room for air. Mm -hmm. So those solar flares, three uh, in a row, one after another would have disabled our society to a large degree. And there is some, some theories out there that the consciousness of the earth was high enough at the time that we were able to avoid that level of trend of disaster. So you can look that up on the NASA website. Uh, um, so I remember Jeff and I would, um, we, we were experimenting with the technology and we were on Google earth and we were looking for the lowest consciousness place on a continent. We would put um, the FLFE service on that area is very similar to what we call a pay it forward now. It's a level of consciousness that you can give out without having to get permission. There's certain, like there's a law of non-interference in the universe. You can, you can do a certain amount and then beyond that, you have really have to get permission to engage. So we would put FLFE on that area of the continent and the whole continent would go up. And we would go around and find the next one and we would just lift it and lift it, you know, and lift it. and um, and then after that happened in 2012, when things were good, there was, you know, um, there wasn't any tragedy. I think it was really January, just kind of celebrating because it was December 21st, 2012. And, and uh, we had the thought that we should start this as a business. And it was from a, we believe a higher power that we could do a lot of good with this. And that was, I don't know if we said yes right away, but it was like, wow, I hadn't, you know, we just hadn't really thought about it. Because we have Jeff and I own other businesses, yeah. And starting another business is not, was not really, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah. So that's my that's my spark story, Jeff. I don't know. Is that pretty close to what yours is? It really is. Yeah, yeah. it was service. I mean, my own personal evolution was important to me um, from from an, from early on. Um, and in, in business, you know, as it relates to, to, to running a business in a way that's loving. Um, but it was really service. Like, what can we do to, to raise consciousness on the planet as a whole? Mm -hmm. And that was really the whole driver. There was no other th thought. And yeah, we, we spent endless hours on Google Earth. And it's really fun zooming around the Earth and finding yeah. spots. Um, Clayton knew of, knew of a place uh, oh, yeah. in... The Arabian Peninsula, where curses was the major, the major uh, industry. So if you wanted to curse someone, you would go to this town and you would pay someone and you would get a curse done. Wow! And so, yeah, it's you, Clayton has been there. Um, so sounds we, like a past life to me. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I'm not in that town. Before. Yeah, not a place you want to leave. You know, when you can. Um, and we that was one of the one of the places we we put this 500 higher consciousness field on and the whole, the, the whole area went up mm. the whole continent. So. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Well, it's interesting. Cause you know, a couple of moments ago, 
you were talking, you, Jeff, were talking about the, the kind of seduction of that fear. And, you know, I, for one, was very grateful that I was doing the work I was doing at the time that all of that hit, because very much like you, we had many extraordinary experiences in our community, but it was just kind of like if you opened the door and looked outside that the world looked way more jagged and black and white than it had mm -hmm. and um for a time and I, I wanted to ask you because when we were talking earlier you mentioned you know how do we look after ourselves as sensitives in these times and mm -hmm. my guides the z's drop, drip feed me information all the time that i don't always understand in in evidential terms but tends to pan out if I track it. And they've been talking about the rise of consciousness also pushing through like heavy, dense emotions for all of us. And therefore, if you're not aware of what's being moved through you and that we're in this big healing phase, if you're either having an unconscious moment or you are unconscious to all of this stuff in general, you might be hurling it at someone else or getting more upset that there was a bigger line at the grocery store than you're used to, seemingly irrationally, but in line with this healing surge that we're in where consciousness is concerned. So I know that helping sensitives, uh, not just through FLFE, but through nutrition and supplements and higher consciousness techniques is, is very close to your heart. So I wondered what you could share with us about that. Sure. Yeah. And I think as we we discussed a little bit beforehand too that this pull into these lower fields can happen when we're tired. Um, and as a sensitive, you know, with all of this, um, these lower energetic fields and fear and worry that, that we, we are empathing with these things and it can be very taxing on our nervous systems um, and our energetic systems. And then that the tired, the more tired we get, the more we can, you know, it's hard to resist falling into those areas. Yeah. So having an energetic sanctuary was sort of the first, you know, might be the first item where, you know, a quiet area in our home with the media off, you know, maybe feng shui to help raise the consciousness and then kind of ongoing clearings, you know, of some kind, whatever clearing technology you use, um, FLFE is clearing continuously and that's, you know, FLFE is an example of an energetic sanctuary. Um, but supporting our nervous systems is, is, we believe, is also important during this time. And for sensitives and for people doing energy work of all sorts, and just pretty much anyone right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a ratio of, of uh, essential fatty acids like fish oil or um, flaxseed oil. To magnesium, it's a four to one ratio, which is um, um, coincidentally, not coincidentally, the same as what's Charles Poliquin, a famous bodybuilder coach, uses to strengthen the nervous system of people that are doing Olympic weightlifting. Because it turns out the nervous system becomes can become your uh, limiting factor. So those two together, the Central fatty acids and magnesium supports our myelin sheath, uh, neutrifies our nervous system, and it helps us to recover more quickly from, from being overextended energetically in our, in, in our nervous system. So we have an F, in our flfe.net, uh, in the tools section, there's a whole section of supplements for consciousness support which is a great list. And we actually, we, we shared that with my newsletter a few months ago when you sent it to me, because it's just good to, it's good to be able to have a reference like that and then, you know, see which ones resonate with you, try them out. Um, and it's interesting you describe with weightlifting, that's something I'd never heard before, that the nervous system could be the limiting factor because I think of, you know, all the empaths and sensitives I know and work with and there's been a lot of weightlifting. <laughs> like you know over the last few years so it's the same is you know different activity but metaphorically very much the same thing i think mm -hmm. yeah it's a few more things on the list should i keep going yeah there? yeah go ahead so releasing negativity seems to be an important 
piece as well. And um, exercise is great for that. It seems that as we move our bodies, we're moving energetic pieces out as well and releasing those. Uh, that's kind of my, my way. I find that really important that I do something every day mm. and it helps clear, clear that out. And grounding, like physically grounding to the earth, barefoot grounding. And the FLFE system has a grounding function as well, where the, the energy in the system or in the field is grounding us to the earth, even if we're not actually touching the earth. Um, and then the, the clearing is another way to release negativity. You mentioned the clearing earlier. So, you know, one of the things we do at our house a lot is we, we will use sage. We will, you know, clear the energy of the room that way. Are there other, are there other techniques or, or tips that you have? Clayton, do you want to jump in there? Yeah. I mean, one of the greatest ways to ways, uh, ways to raise the vibration of an environment is to just clean it, hmm. you know, just like water and a cloth. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know get up on a ladder there's been times in my life when i've like in my office in my practice you know maybe 15 20 years ago somebody said if you're ever if you ever want to grow your business take everything out of your office wipe down the walls wipe down the books wipe down the like wipe, wipe the floor everything clean the carpets and then start putting one thing back in at a time and clean it off and every time i did that before yeah. I got my office set up, the phone would start ringing. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, you know, just be really conscious, you know, bless the walls. Mm -hmm. Thank this building for having a, you know, for providing a roof over my head and comfort from the elements. And you thank the author of this book when you're cleaning this book, you just bless everything, bless everything, bless everything. And, um, you know, being in service to others is a great way to be more free. Mm. And so if, whenever you're in a blessing state, whether that's just cleaning your office and being grateful for the building and then the desk and the book, mm -hmm. if you can do some volunteer work, I mean, I did a lot of volunteer work at one time in my life and it was, it was one place I could always go and get out of myself. Mm -hmm. Totally. And, and Jeff, just to kind of pivot back to something you said, you talked about having a sanctuary in the home and, you know, it made me think like I've lived in lots of different, I've moved a lot in my life and I lived in lots of tiny apartments. They were often my favorite, the really small ones. Um, and what I would do, I remember with some of those places was I would just designate a chair, you know, because there wasn't much room. So I would have a chair in the corner that would have my healing blanket on it and it would have a crystal by it, you know, and I would just have, you know, you don't always need a ton of space. It's just having the the kind of designated vibrational area that you can go to that is that touchstone means you've always got that place to go and recharge and and it's in your consciousness to do it in a different way if you actually create even just a chair in the corner of the room if you don't have much space yeah yeah it's been so interesting in our exploration of consciousness and consciousness fields that everything holds energy especially like dirt, like Clayton saying, you know, like dust, like those crystalline pieces of dust and that um, our house, the drywall, the, the, uh, the concrete block, it all has crystal in it and it's all holding uh, the history of consciousness there. And so when we create that chair, that place, that's our special place and we meditate there and we keep bringing our positive energy there, that it, those, all the pieces, the chair, the floor, the drywall, it's all the crystal that you mentioned, it's all holding that energy for us. And this, you know, that we're talking about is it kind of goes back to, I think it was you, Clayton, that um, I'm not sure which one of you said it, but one of you talked about how magnificent we are. I think it was you, Clayton, you were talking about how magnificent we are as human beings, electrically, energetically, and that truth plus this truth we're talking about with a home and a room and walls, it was whitewashed out of our education. Like, you know, we didn't grow up learning any of these truths unless we were trained that way or we had certain parents or we lived in a very conscious community. So it, it's so important to remember that versus the amnesia of this level of dimension of life is is 
all I'm focusing on. And so therefore that's all I'm manifesting. But when you just take a moment to step back and, and allow yourself to open out that everything is bigger than you, that single focus you might be on or the thing that your friend wants you to focus on and talk about. I mean, it's true, but it's a point of focus. And when we widen our focus, we can start to connect back to the life force of everything. Yeah, managing the mind is, is uh, it's no small thing. Yeah. <laughs> as, mag true. as magnificent as we are, we do have yeah. that mind. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do. Yeah. You know, one thing when we all had a chat a couple of weeks back, one thing that we all just touched on, um, it came up naturally in our conversation, was compassion fatigue. Mm -hmm. And I remember back, I you know, I did private sessions for 14 years and every week. And I remember there would be times in my life where I walked into compassion fatigue without really knowing I had. And it wasn't so much my work. It was more... Um, because of holding space for so many people intensively during the week, I found that, you know, there'd come a point where I just, I would run out of juice. I would run out of the ability to be with the emotions of others, which was interesting because that was very much what I was built for. So I know for sure that in the last year or so, um, compassion fatigue has been hitting a lot of people. And it's not that you don't want to be compassionate to the needs or the emotions or the suffering of others, but because it's been so intense um, on the planet, I know many people who really struggled to not burn out or not run out of compassion for the world, for others, um, who felt quite empty. And so we, we got talking about that and you said you, you know, this is something that you, you kind of had high consciousness techniques for and something that you had looked into too. I wonder if you could share some of that. I'll start that one off, Jeff. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know, for me personally, um, when I'm in that state of, of, of fatigue or, Overwhelm is kind of how I feel it in my body, in my system. I really do rely on some of these things we've been talking about. Um, and, you know, that finding that sanctuary and supporting myself, you know, physically. But there's also a, um, a, a kind of bringing in of the aura. So when we're talking about these large, um, you know, global fields of consciousness and um, in extending to others, you know, I feel that my aura extends, you know, that there's this movement of energetic movement in interaction with that person. And um, it's sort of an energy management and I'll, I'll leave Clayton to get, get into more details of that. It's kind of bringing that aura in, you know, like physically, you know, asking that aura to come closer to the body and not be as, as extended. And so that's a technique to, to, to work with that. And I'll, I'll pass it over to you, Clayton. Yeah, we spent quite a bit of time um, and we do continue to spend time uh, exploring how to uh, measure and manage our own energy system. And what we've found is that having bringing the aura into about three inches within the body it seems to be the sweet spot. Mm. If I bring it much closer, I tend to get self-centered, interestingly mm. enough. And if I'm not aware of it, it can unconsciously um, extend itself beyond my ability to manage it the way I'd like to. Mm. And then... You, you know, again, it's knowing yourself, it's having uncontrolled thoughts, watching yourself behave irrationally or in an exaggerated way. Mm. Um, there's a, a Native American, uh, North American technique. It's probably around the world, but I know for sure it's Native North American because some of my Native friends have taught me. They do this uh, meditation where they, they just ask all the little bits of themselves that they've left out in the world 
to come back to them. Yeah. You know, with the lessons and with the positive energy and, you know, and, and sort of filter that as it comes back. And uh, we oftentimes do that for a minute just before we have a meeting at the office, Lee. It's just to help get present. You know, we leave little bits of our energy all over the place. And I mean, that that would be a great daily discipline. I'm not saying I do it, but I think that would be a really good one, especially when things are tense, you know, when, we're, when you're in a tough spot. It's just to bring yourself back uh, to, to the present. I mean, that's the theme that we always hear. It's, you know, come back to the moment. Yeah. Um, Interesting. I've, you know, verbal um, directives work very well for me. So there are a few, like, I call back every piece of myself that I have ever given away. Uh, you know, I release any energies and emotions mm -hmm. that are not mine. That's a huge one for me. But I really resonated with what you said, Jeff, about overwhelm. Because that's that's now, you know, I, 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 did, I haven't burnt out in a big way for many, many years. Um, but overwhelm is my signal. And it tends to be that I'm not self-caring or replenishing enough and I've got too horizontally connected with the world and I haven't come back to what I call my vertical, which is, you know, life force, spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting to hear you, Clayton, talk about, you know, if you bring your aura in too much, it's self-centeredness. And then you can go the other way, which is, you know, too out there in everyone else's field. I think this is such a uh, such a lifelong learning for sensitives, empaths, not just because you need to figure it out with who you are, but because the world is changing so much. So as the emotional frequency changes, it's like we have to rebalance all over again. You figure your balance out and then whoosh, along comes a whole new set of circumstances and energies. And it's like, okay, now try this. And you're like, wow, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a learning curve, a constant learning curve for sure. Mm -hmm. Things like just paying attention to your hydration, go back to eating well, all those self-care tips that are standard, uh, walking deliberately, um, you know, slow walking deliberately can bring you back into your body. Mm -hmm. Those are just a few more, but I mean, your, your community is pretty adept at that, Lee. I mean, you have those oh. conversations all the time. Yeah. Just, it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's part of our, part of our way of, way of being it's mm -hmm. and speaking of our community if you don't mind we we have a few questions from the community that i thought were were really interesting and um i know we're going to talk a little bit about some of the programs and upgrades that you have within flfe but i just thought i would share before i ask this question a, a nice uh, testimonial from somebody here we were the lucky recipients via my sister-in-law for a whole year of flfe and it's been wonderful. Both my husband and I felt it at first. And for me, it was like a hug. I'm still totally fascinated that someone could come up with this, but it completely makes sense. I hope to use it forever. So that's, that's a, a thank you that came in in the list of questions. Um, but this one I thought was really interesting. And perhaps we can use it to talk about your EMF mitigation program. But I, I thought this, this is really a great one. Our thoughts, beliefs, etc., are of an electromagnetic nature and literally create reality. EMFs are a concern and we have to take into account that we are human and our human bodies can be really sensitive to EMF exposure. Something that concerns me though, if we become focused on the dangers of EMF exposure and what it can do to our human bodies, don't we add additional fear and danger to ourselves? as the cells in our bodies follow and react to our thoughts, how do we create a healthy balance? I, you know, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great question and it's a really important awareness to hold. Mm -hmm. I can start. Uh, mm. One thing to notice or to know is that there are many positive EMFs, electromagnetic fields, frequencies around us, the earth, um, you know, a loving interaction with someone that there, there's, you, you could put the electromagnetic or the EMFs around us in, in several categories. And we use our measurement of consciousness sort of as our bellwether. So if something is consciousness lowering, so a, an, an EMF field that's consciousness lowering is something that got our attention, you know, 
we we uh, we maintain the uh, the service at 560. You know, everyone has the chance to move it up and down, but that's kind of our promise, which is uh, unconditional love vibration. And we noticed that some EMFs were lowering that that vibration. And so it, I think maybe it's consciousness lowering is a little less fear producing as well than, you know, that it's, it's going to kill me or reduce, mm-hmm. you know, dissociate my hemoglobin or whatever, um, that we're looking at it, is the environment positive for life? And something that has, has become less positive for life is then something that we would work with. And um, with that fellow fee, we tend not to clean the eye. It's part of how we approach life. We tend not to go down the rabbit holes of, yeah. of you know, fear and worry and, and instead look at what can we do. And so we, we did a lot of research on, on Clayton, on Chungite. I'll let you take over. You did so much of the research on that and how we brought that into the service. When we discovered that some of the properties of the subscribers were dropping in consciousness, we started to explore that. And when we would call them Lee, we would find out that, oh, well, a cell phone tower just went in across the street. Mm. Oh, I just put a new router in. Uh, I had a smart meter installed on my home. And so there was a pattern that emerged pretty quickly. And uh, as Jeff said, uh, the last time we talked, um, you know, we've sort of evolved our language around it to talk about consciousness lowering influences because that's a kind of a reason statement where we can get out of the fear, right? We can come up from the hundred into the 400 where we're not talking about a black and white influence, rather a gradient of influence that we can then look at managing. So when we were exploring how to compensate for uh, EMF, uh, conscious lowering EMFs, we um, measured all of the different elements in the world that we could find to see if we could put the energetic signature into the environment, because that's what we figured we could do. So we put the energetic essence of what we found to be the only material in existence that would actually take a, ne- a consciousness lowering in, uh, electromagnetic frequency and turn it into a positive influence. Mm. The only thing we found is shungite. And mm. lots of people use shungite in their EMF devices. Yes. That's great. Uh, we know people that have had smart meters where they put a piece of shungite on the smart meter and a, the plant that was in the room with the smart meters, they did an experiment, was growing away from the smart meters, started to grow towards the smart meters. We might have talked about that last time. So you can do you can play with this yourself. Um, so it was really, and it was trying to find something that just wouldn't block it because if you block a frequency, it's going to go somewhere else, right? You're sending it somewhere else. It's like taking something and putting it in the you know something toxic and putting it in the river because it's going downstream. Mm-hmm. Well, you know we all live downstream. <laughs> So yeah. it's that concept of harmonizing versus blocking or deflecting or even diffusing, mm. you know, and um, I think when Jeff talks about the upgrades, we can talk about some of the new EMF influences that we're able to harmonize now. So um, Great. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the upgrades. Like I know you have immune support and I think given every the events of the last year and the fear of the last year and how that affects our immune system and 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 our well-being in general that that's a really great um upgrade yeah tell us tell us more about those so with the flfe system you know we're activating the field and the level of consciousness goes up the uh, the vibration is is higher and we're able to to make requests of divinity so these this is a bit like, or really exactly like, you praying for something. Mm. So we're, you know, as we've said in during this talk, we're very powerful, incredibly powerful beings. And so when you have a, a thought um, related to your immune system, so if you're praying for your immune system, you would look, okay, what's the lowest functioning part of my immune system? 
So what we're putting into the field is that the lowest part, the lowest functioning part of the immune system of every person in the field is supported to rise, to have energy qi flow to it, like, like in Chinese medicine, the qi flows through to that part of the immune system and it's supported to rise in its functioning. And we don't make medical claims. Um, and this is the thought that is in the field. That is the uh, support is rising, raising the chi of the immune system where it needs it the most. You know, where it's being fatigued, where it's being overworked, that it's supported in those areas. And then once that area moves up high enough, then the next lowest area is then supported. And so it's kind of a continuous process mm. of supporting the immune system. And what are some of the other programs that you have added since we last spoke? Well, the, um, uh, the EMF mitigation has continued to evolve and much of it comes from the customers. So um, EMF mitigation, you know, we focused at first, as we've said, on consciousness lowering EMFs and many of the EMF sensitives that we work with that have been part of our community um, got immediate relief. Um, sleep was one of those big ones, feeling of anxiety. Um, I, in particular, what, if I turn on and off the EMF mitigation, which we can do in our control panel, anyone can, I feel, I feel tight in my chest. My mm -hmm. shoulders kind of start to go up. And when I turn it back on, then my shoulders relax. Mm -hmm. So there's that anxiety feeling. Um, but what we discovered is that some... EMF sensors were so sensitive, kind of, you can use the dietary, you know, um, a dietary way of looking at it, like if you're gluten sensitive and you get more gluten sensitive and you get to the point where you can't even have the tiniest bit of gluten. Well, some people are that way with EMFs. Yeah. yeah. So we, so we expanded the service to, um, to harmonize even EMFs that weren't consciousness lowering. So they, they were even, were harmonizing a wider spectrum of EMFs. Um, and then our latest upgrade on properties, which is releasing for um, FLFE everywhere, which is cell phones and, and objects, is for satellites. So we discovered the more specific we are with the Shungai and its action, the, the more it functions, the better it works. And we had multiple satellite um, signals coming into the environments and sometimes they were overlapping and creating kind of high spots or, or um, very hot spots. And so that overlapping was creating a different kind of environment. So then when we specifically call that out for the Shanghai to work with, then we saw results mm -hmm. and we're about to launch a, um, um, a study with the University of Pennsylvania researcher on EMF sensitivity using our service. It would be a double, it's a double blind study uh, with, with people. So that, that will be hopefully on our website in the next um, few months. That's great. It's great. I, I also loved what you said about harmonizing all of the EMFs, regardless of whether they are a lowering EMFs or not. That 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 I have I have a few friends in my life who are deeply sensitive to EMFs, and uh, it has become more troubling for them over the last few years. So I think uh, it's very good timing with everything that's you know showing up and going up in our world right now. Yeah. I know that you're very passionate with your team about support and customer support and customer um, customer service and having you know being able to phone your team and have a conversation about it. I'm curious how how does your team feel and all of you as a group feel? Here you are nine years later, and you have a community around the world who are in relationship to the service and what you're doing. I'm just curious uh, where you and your team are at a couple of years later um, than when we last spoke, because I know a lot has changed. I'm just curious what the experience is for all of you, the human experience of being in these roles and being in this 
service. Let me start that one off. It's interesting. We, we were looking at our business plan uh, this morning, Lee, and we were talking about aspirational values versus embodied or integrated values mm -hmm. and um, customer, you know, excellent customer service is one of our, we believe uh, embodied values are integrated. And we were making ourselves make a list of all the examples of that. So we knew that we were doing it and uh, you know, it's not perfect of course, but um, the office is just, I look forward to going to the office. The energy is so good there. And I mean, we, we have a really, we have a great screening process now that we've upgraded over the years. So we find people that are more and more aligned. Um, these people are spiritual devotees on their own path and they, every one of them teaches us something. Um, we just moved our office after a six month reno. We just uh, tripled our, doubled, almost tripled our space. So we have a lot more room right now than we've ever had before, which is quite delightful. That's great. Um, and we've got this quite nice environment. It's almost as nice as yours. <laughs> I see yours. Congratulations on your office. It's well, it's funny. We're a little bit in sync because we just had a similar space upgrade, and yeah, and it, it does it does it does feel good for you, but also I think for what you're doing because it's the container for the work, right? Yeah, and um, you know, there like we have customers around the world, and we're growing as like your community is growing. So there's a sense of optimism and the potential for a, to make a good living. You know, we've we pay quite a bit above the average wage in our area and we have a really good benefits plan so we're able to share that now with people that things are stable and uh, I look at the staff as my customers my job is to take care of them and mm -hmm. to some degree you know I mean Jeff and I are business partners and friends and we have a general manager who's is a he's a great man as well and um, and you know we have some women who are leaders on, on the team and watching them step into their own power mm. as women, you know, they have their own way of doing things. And it's, it's delightful to see people grow. It's becoming, yeah, it's, I never, th I never thought it'd be that satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't know. Beautiful. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? I'm fed and many of our, customer service people are fed by by the customers and what they say mm -hmm. you know their experiences their relationships you know be depressed you know uncles that they put on the service getting out of bed starting to engage with life and it's you know it's just right here yeah and um i think that feeds our crs's our customer service and free trial people and um mm -hmm. So when you go in and you've got that positive energy, it just makes going to work. Like I said, it's a, it can be a joy. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, I think that's changed. You know, it's just, it's always been that way. We've always gotten great, you know, results back from the customer, but it just seems that with, we're now open seven in the morning until I think it's seven at night, Clayton, is it now? Or is it 10 at night? We've got, very long hours. Um, yeah, it's 90, 90 hours a week now. Yeah. 90 hours of customer service. So we really like to talk to people. So when they when they call in, someone answers. And um, we can really support people in their growth because these, as we know, these moments of sur you know surrendering and things moving through us and maybe those lower vibrating parts coming up to be, to be uh, seen and acknowledged and and integrated. Um, sometimes you need someone to talk to. Yeah. And um, we're not we're not counselors, but we can hold space for someone and um, talk to them. And you know, often we'll get people who just need somebody to talk to. You know, in this world, they just, they need a positive you know conversation. So so they they call into the office. So I think it's a, like a positive light shining. Uh, mm. in the office it's really amazing beautiful and it ripples because mm. you your team and all the people that you're connected to that's the thing i always love about it because everything you said i resonate with but i 
what what I also love is, you know, whatever any of us in whatever group we're in, whether it's three of us who are friends who meet for coffee and raise our own vibration together, or whether it's 3,000 of us in a group somewhere or online, the ripple effect of that gathering of consciousness that just keeps getting shared and keeps spreading is is so important and not to be taken for granted. I really, in a very embodied way now, I fully understand that sentence, be the change you wish to see in the world and how even if you can't be the change that day because you're having a rough day or you're going through something or your resources or your situation limits the dream that you have in this today moment, knowing that that's where you're going and that that's what you're aiming towards is so important, especially now, I think more than ever, because consciousness is raising, but it's very choppy waters too. So wherever you find a life raft or a lighthouse that works for you and you want to stay there for a while, knowing that the more of us gather around that central place, we, we amplify together. It's really important. Yeah. That's why I love what you're doing with FLFE and thank you for, for being here and, and talking to us today. And um, I have no doubt that if we speak again in a year or two, there will be more evolution. But um, I, I would just like to encourage anyone who's listening who has, has, has curiosity about the system to try it out. You actually offer a free uh, free trial for a couple of weeks that people can experience it and try it out for themselves, which I think is really important because that's where the, uh, that's where the evidence lies for you personally to see, see whether or not it, it brings a positive effect to your life. We always encourage people to trust themselves, Lee. And um, with the free trial, you don't, you don't have to enter a credit card, so you can't get accidentally billed. And that was part of what we wanted to uh, offer is that it is a blessing, even, you know, no matter what you do, it, we believe it will help your life and we're, we're glad to share that. Yeah. Well, thank you both for being here again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, but it, 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 especially I think this year, it feels more important than ever. So mm. thank you for doing what you do in the world. And we will be sharing links to the free trial underneath uh, this video, or if you're listening on iTunes, it will be in the show notes. So wherever or however you're engaging with this, conversation we'll put the links uh, underneath and do you have any closing closing words or thoughts before we all all depart yeah i'll start um yeah, i'm just grateful to be here with with the two of you and um i think that what we've said about human consciousness and the power that we, that we are being so important and just, you know, we just wish to for us to step into that and, and, and move forward in the world. And we can be, we, we can be the, the rising of consciousness in ourselves and in the world just by who we are. Mm. Just, grateful to be on this journey with uh with with all of you with all of humanity my hope for us all is that um that this can be what is often referred to as a is a a breakthrough experience preceded by a breakdown mm. and that we're able to learn more about ourselves, learn how to be more resilient, uh, more kind, and to come together in, in communities of mutual support. The thought that I'm having as we're closing up is about the, uh, the power of positive communities. And uh, I feel like you're part of our community, Lee, and uh, Jeff, of course. So I'm grateful to be in that community in this moment. Likewise. Likewise, thank you both for that. And uh, thank you to the wonderful Regina Meredith who connected us in the first place several years ago, um, who's another dear soul in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thank you guys for what you're doing. And uh, I'll be very curious to talk to you again, a little, a little ways down the line to see where we've all gone and um, 
and and what's next for what you're doing in the world. But for being here today, thank you. And to everyone who tuned in, you can learn more about Jeff and Clayton and their work by following the link in the show notes. We will see you next time on Impact the World. Take good care. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Impact the World. And if you want to go deeper and more in depth with my work, you should check out my members group, The Portal. You can find it at my website, leeharrisenergy.com or visit theportal.world.